First one is called a quarter Japanese. I identify with the quarter, and I still don't know about the nickel and seven dimes. <laughs> Cut up the sun, it still shines. Even if the river is narrow, the wind still blows over the flat meadow of the sparrows and the pond with little stepping stones. I watch the sugioka ripple and trust love without light. But my blindness, this cannot be helped, makes windows never exposed, shudder and crack, even if they don't fall flat. Apparently, a quarter is all it takes, just some slanted eyes, so I can get a, what are you? <laughs> And suddenly, you're a specimen, and the ground beneath your feet becomes the back of my head. And now that gravity is no longer listening, I guess we'll take whatever we want, and you can call it stone stolen. This cannot be helped, still chance, from a diamond passion, twice as hard generation, even though Auntie Dora was going at it with that list, with those house chores. Seven minutes is 70 when you're 70, but when you're a Sugioka, the sun isn't down yet. And even if it is, it's not that dark outside where chronic fatigue and depression see sideways and meet each other on the midnight lawn. And they don't know how to see farther than grandfather, than the sidewalk on their side of the street. The other side of the street, they see a world, I'll tell you, and they don't want a refund. Quarters confuse people. Because if I'm confused about the quarter, then the whole dollar is in question. And farewell to Manzanar equipped me with shikata ganai and a narrative that I can't remember. But this phrase and its meaning echo across me in phases I cannot predict and do not understand. The book took my lungs, and without my knowledge, it rode on my back. So I go back and make sure the trace lines don't get drawn in. I see the boats of the captured Asian Americans, and apart from it, the car granddad dragged himself away in. It mattered that he was the one driving, because road mapped, wings clipped, he still thought he was flying through the apricot orchards, white dirt tried to steal, so he turned in his grave before and after dying. Fear trusts your mother's word. Anything other than silent servant is running towards absurd. My mind stumbles and cries as identity flies in and out of 3.14 sided lives. Would it be too much a seemingly endless enigma of truths and lies? I never knew how I fit into this pie dish. And now that I've thought about it, it makes more of a lot less sense. <laughs> This is my San Francisco poem. It's very short. It's called Millennium Tower. It's the crooked tower that's full of rich people. Using their rich minds, they find a rich solution to one of their poor problems for one of the thousands of windows. Tape! Oh, yes. This will fix that hole for everyone else to fall out of. <laughs> this is simply called compartmentalization. There is a disease in the body that separates meat from bone. Vernon Keeve III. Compartmentalization is not carrying all of yourself all the time, leaving pieces of yourself behind, and only carrying certain ones, ultimately, ultimately feeling fractures across your body and mind. Sometimes you get the choice of when. Sometimes you don't.
This is called butterfly snow. The butterfly snow falls up the powdery mountainside. The fluttering prayer flags complement their little white wings, meandering as graceful snowflakes. Above and through they move, with and as the landscape. And the green landscape mixed with white flies. The sight is all for the eyes, and the silence is all for the ears, because they do not need sound for beauty, for the silver-soaked souls climb in numbers beyond the eyes as souls waiting to soar. See the white warriors from another life take on this journey from the window. This is my last poem in an honor of the fire thieves. <laughs> it is called The Fire. The way we intertwined our lives, let the fires burn on outside. We even let little ones in the door, and we all faced the subtle flames. Over time, the heat came again and again. We had our choices. The house had its exits. We didn't cross fire. We moved out, each of us hitting our crafted hammers into the runaway holes, shaping them to save the souls climbing through them. It's so bright outside, and the sun's been out for too long. Maybe our paths will collide on the crackling sidewalk, but the fire is taking the house and leaving it is all we can do. Thank you so much, Kim. Thank you, Lauren. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Mom. <laughs> Thank you, Vincent. You are, <laughs> you are all my, um, my poets, my teachers, and a big part of the reason why I'm here. Thank you.